So that is that. This is going to be a video of a flick through of the 30 days of Huvember and my thoughts on how this month went as a challenge. Um, so to get right into it, I initially, after creating this video on the 31st of October, I initially thought I wanted to use um, flowers as my subject, um, similar to me using birds in 2018 as my Inktober subject and insects in 2019 as my Inktober subject. I went to my mum's garden way before lockdown and took photos of um, all my mum's wonderful flowers in her garden and wanted to use those as references. And that was all well and good. I planned out which flowers from those references I wanted to use for each month um, and then I actually did day one and I just I didn't like it I wasn't feeling it and I just I knew immediately that I was not going to be able to do 30 days of that of something I'm not feeling passionate about and so I thought initially I was wanting to do this instead of Inktober which I have I have done and and so I wanted to include the inks. The inking was my favourite thing about Inktober and that's what I wanted to include in this. So I thought I would combine the two and recently I've been developing a style. If you've been watching my other videos, I've done various things with this style, like this jellyfish. I've done some turtles and things where I do a watercolour background and then ink over the top. So I thought, why not implement that? Um, my problem and the thing I had to overcome was that this wasn't all inks there were pro markers in here so i had to play around with how i would lay that down as a watercolor background so the inks were fine i added as you, as you've seen in the, the videos i've added water and i've added splashes of the inks etc i've added watercolors in there but for things where i found the perfect color in a pro marker let's say or a copic um i couldn't I couldn't do it. I tried mixing alcohol ink and kind of making my own thin inks, um, almost like you'd find in a Copic refill. Um, and I tried squirting that on there, but this paper was definitely not made for that. This handmade paper barely held kind of a good form on the watercolors without it bleeding everywhere. So that was definitely no there. So although I found all the colors in, in all the pro markers and Copics, I've had to actually substitute that for a mixing of my acrylic inks or my water-based inks or my watercolors so a lot of these named um, supplies here actually were not used in the end so anyway um getting into the artwork where should I put this um I actually have really really enjoyed this month really enjoyed it I think I think everything's turned out there's probably two inkings in here that I do not like as much as the others but regardless they are all probably my favorite things that I've done recently and um yeah I, I would say it's probably my favorite so um let's get into flipping through this and I'll share my thoughts and things uh, maybe through this and at the end so this is day one um very simple just um a very bright yellow from the color wheel and then I use I actually used my Etcher pens, so I'm going to share my thoughts on these afterwards, but um, in a previous video um, before uh, November, I actually did a, my I did this using these Etcher pens, um, and I thought I would carry that trend and use these for the entirety of November, so um, that's what I used. And then the handmade paper, oh, I can't remember the brand, but I bought it from Paper Chase and Casa also sell it. But it's a handmade paper brand, so um, I'll try and link it in the description below if I remember. Um, so yeah, that's day one. I really, really like that. Um, day two, I did a golden frog. Um, I really like the stance of this. I saw it in one of my um, art, at my animal books and just thought it was perfect. Um, the camel here, which I thought was very nice. A lot of fur detail in there. I think he's got a bit of a cheeky smirky grin on his face there this lovely fox this color was absolutely made for this fox i think anyway we have an orangutan i always think orangutans look really sad um yeah um a lot of these have highlights using my um sakura jelly roll and my pilot uh no uniball signo that's the one it's these two pens for my um highlights 
So the Sakura Jelly Roll there, pretty standard, and then this Uniball Signo, uh, which are kind of the highlight pens that I tend to use quite often. Um, this was quite, I, th I think I, had, I was short on time, but I really wish I'd done it a little larger just to fill that space a little bit more. Uh, Monarch Butterfly was perfect for this colour. A parrot, <laughs> I really like this one. There's so much, if you find a parrot picture, there's so much detail just on the face. This is a ladybird. Again, I wish I'd shifted this up. There's a few times where I've not placed it very well in the in the the on the paper, in the center. This color I really like, and I really like this octopus. I definitely want to make this into a bigger piece at some, at some point. Little flamingo. <laughs> a little pig. This is not my favorite, and I, I think it's because where I've done watercolor, this watercolor effect behind it, it obviously creates highlights and darks and sometimes they landed in probably the worst places and I couldn't really do anything about it um, but I guess it makes this little piggy uh, unique um, again this is probably one of the ones that I'm least um, I least like and I think it's just because I could have done just a way more detailed jellyfish probably something similar to this but um, I guess this is a scaled down version so I can't complain too much this is a starfish and I thought I'd go for a bit more of an elaborate starfish and again something I was having issues with was with some of the darker toned backgrounds I was get, I was finding it really hard to make the black kind of shine through and really um, show up on that on that background this is a fungus beetle I really really like this one I think the strangeness of the watercolor in the background really aids the look of this um, shiny shell i think it makes it look 3d then we have a fly i think the colors lend themselves well to this I have, I have a thing about doing flies for some reason then we have a stingray it's very simple um probably one of my quicker days where i was running out of time then we have a shark again trying to get those blacks to show was quite difficult this is a blue tang, also Dory from Finding Nemo, if you're uh, familiar with that film. We have Humpback Whale. I really like all the knobbly bits and stuff, and I think it really lends well to inking and the harsh lines and hatching. We have a dolphin. The curves. I always think of dolphins are so majestic and beautiful with the curves. Then we have a peacock. This is not my favourite. I always think a peacock's a really good idea, but when I start inking it, it's just, it's a lot of work. And to get this to show up, and this to show up, was kind of difficult to kind of look on the same plane. It's not my favourite. Then we have, um, what's it called? Uh, honey, I think it's a honey. I've got this written down somewhere. A green honey creeper, that's the one green honey creeper they actually come in a few blues and greens these very nice turtle I quite like the mix of colors here this is where I've mixed some colors to try and get a mid hue um, and it looks quite nice actually then we have a malad duck which are, it's such a common duck and they're so beautiful here in the UK anyway then we have a croc I'm pretty sure there's a croc not an alligator you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Then we have a chameleon. I actually think this is one of my favourites. I think the, the little face on the chameleon just looks really suspicious. Um, and I think just the tones and the shadows here have worked really well on it. Very nice. Then we have a Spanish fly. I was going to go with just a green fly, like an aphid type thing. Um, but I thought I'd go for a bit more of a beetle look. Um, much, much prefer that. Then we have a uh, budgie. I was, I'm trying to make these, I was trying to do full bodied ones because eventually I want to make prints, um, but on some of them, I wasn't going to get enough detail if this was zoomed out too much. So that's why some of these are, are just the heads. And then finally, we've got a green snake. Um, and I really like the way this is curled up on here. And I find it really fascinating that they can do that. And what I loved about this is um, the texture of this handmade paper when I was hatching allowed the pen to really make some really nice texture on the on the snake. And I think it lends really well to it. 
um, and the bark I actually really enjoy doing. I should do some more types of things like that. And that's that. So yeah, like I say, I'm really, really pleased with all of those. Um, I think I've, I've managed to do some good um, days with that. Um, again, like I said, I was going to mention, I use predominantly out of my etcher pens the small bullet nib, the 005 and the 01. What I will, they've been very, very good. Things that to, I want to mention about these pens, um, I found it really difficult for the thinner pens to lay down a dark black colour, so I'd have to come in with this thicker pen, which was good, but if I wanted a thin line, it wasn't the best because I couldn't then keep the line thin if I wanted it to be darker so that's why some of these were didn't have the contrast that I would usually get and and secondly I just want to show you that I have absolutely obliterated this 05 there is no nib there at all it is completely gone um and I I actually um I think it only just stretched to the last day so I'm they're very good pens I do like them but I probably, they're not the best that I have because I've used some of my other fine liners way more than this and they've not, they've not done that. So I don't know how, why that's happened. I don't know whether the nib's just a bit softer than some of the other inking pens, but overall they have worked well. They've done me a solid. They've, I've managed to do 30 days of inking with them. No problem. Um, other than that one really. So that's really good. And, um, I really enjoyed this and at the moment I'm working on launching my own website where you'll be able to buy prints etc um, from the two parts of my business um, if you don't know either of those I've got Lucy Locks Art and I've got Lucy Locks Miniatures um, so I will be launching a website either this month or next month and hopefully I will have some prints up to, for sale at some point and this will these will be for sale so if you particularly like one I recommend um, following me on maybe my Instagram at Lucy Locks Art or at Lucy Locks Miniatures and um, keeping an eye out for when I announce that the website is up and running. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this and I hope you did too. Please give me a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to see more art because I will definitely be continuing to make uh, plenty more art along this vein, hopefully in the future. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.